Okay, today on the workbench we got this fighting robot. The robot itself appears very minty on the outside. <clears throat> what I wanted to show you is uh, a reason that you don't want to ship these robots that have guns and pointy things in the front in the box unprotected. As you can see, this box now has a hole poked all the way through it. That's where the gun resides when the robot's in the box. <clears throat> so not only will it destroy the whole value of the box, since that's the front, that's the that's the money shot, but it also can damage the guns. Now, initially when I pulled it out, the first thing I did was just look it over and, and felt the wheels, and I noticed that this wheel wouldn't even turn. And this actually was a factory error, if you will. I'd already pulled, bent the tabs and took the foot off before I thought about shooting any video. And the uh, rubber piece, when it was trimmed from the factory, was actually so long that when the wheel was wedged in and pinned with the axle, that it just couldn't turn. So even if the robot worked, it wouldn't have been able to walk. Now, as far as working, I just put diesel batteries in it. And when I turn it on, as you can see, we do have a, a gun light. Oh, now we all of a sudden we have motor. I was going to take it apart to try to get the motor going, but we may have lucked out. Okay. Yeah. I like it when they fix themselves like that, when the motors haven't run for so long. You've got spinning gears up in the head. You've got the gun action. And basically, I was going to uh, bend this tab, this tab, lift the top off to get into where I could rotate one of the motor gears. As the grease in the commentator solidifies, and then the motors don't run. Now, on a lot of these, what you find is the... Uh, they call this a bow tie switch. These will get broken and then you'll have to come up with a replacement one. Either make one by hand, 3D print one, or get a resin cast one and replace that. And it's, uh, it's actually quite involved to replace that. And I mean, it involves taking the top off, the front off, the clear visor part off, all to get in there so that you can get to that bow tie and then it's kind of crimped in on a little metal rod and you have to do the crimp on top. It's a big, it's a big pain in the ass. So it's nice to see that the uh, gun didn't get broken by being shipped and hammered and gone all the way through there. It's nice to see that it can walk now. There's the uh, the made in Japan part. Um, in case we didn't look over the rest of the box, here's the uh, end flap the info on that and of course your maker information. It's been taped on the sides which is unfortunate but better than uh, falling apart I guess. The send panels the same and again been taped unfortunately. But I guess the biggest disaster of course is the uh, the hole Can't think of anything else in the box we might want to look at. I am happy that the uh, motor decided to spring to life because it wasn't going to be vet that involved. The hardest part was going to be lifting the top off and finding a gear that I could spin to, to get the motor going again. But you got the spinning gears, you got the moving arms, you got the walking action. The motor does sound a little dry though. Normally I would say hold off on opening the toy until something major has happened. Like the light on the gun is burned out or, or something like that. You had to replace a switch. But since it is here in the shop for repair. And it does cost so much money to ship things these days. That. I'm thinking we might want to try to go in there and see if we can lube up the motor.
because it's not going to lube itself and it's only going to get noisier. I know you probably can't see much of what I'm doing, but basically I'll show you here. I bent this front tab open so I could get to the two little tabs and I'm going to lift this part off. In case you have never seen it, that's what that looks like. There's the two little tabs straightened out. Now we have to do the same thing over on this side. The robot has a lot of dust on it, so it has been on display, but doesn't show any play wear, so that's nice. I mean, the robot itself, if someone took the time to dust it, would be very minty. Very good robot example from that from the 1960s period. Okay, so at that point, generally speaking, it should be possible if I get a little bit bigger prying surface so I don't bend anything up. If nothing else, this will give you guys an inside look at uh, what goes on in one of these with the spinning gears up in the head. Because you're going, wow, how do they get the drive to those spinning gears up in the head? You know, when it was new, of course, these plastic tips weren't on. I have no intention of uh, pulling those off. So, let's see here. Like that, like that, okay. The, uh... The gears on top of the head get driven through this shaft, as you can see, so they don't have to do a direct drive, and it touches onto this shaft, which moves. Yep. And there's the motor is right up in here. There is one large plastic gear, unfortunately, but it's in good shape. The pinion gear on the motor itself is brass. And the other side of it's here, so I like the position of the motor. It means I should be able to get in there with the precision oiler. And that's any oiler that has a long needle nose on it for reaching in small areas. And a light grade oil like a gun oil or sewing machine oil. And we'll put a drop on the front of the shaft next to the motor and a drop on the back of the motor shaft. Now it runs so much better. So much happier. Running like new. An old piece of factory scotch tape in there. Their idea was to keep these wires from getting caught up in any of this spinning stuff. I'm going to leave, well, I mean, that old piece of cellophane tape is just rattling around in there. If I leave it, it'll get caught up in something. So I better take it out. So we've lubed the motor. You guys have had a peek inside. I wasn't really planning on tearing it down any further. But if, you were, if, a, if a person was going to see how this piece here could move, you would first have to uh, disconnect your guns from the inside so you can push that gun mechanism in then this whole clear piece could slide up and off because it's trapped in a picture frame type groove if you needed to get down in there to work on the uh, on the switch or anything like that and let's straighten out this this and Get the back tab started again. There we go. There's three of them. Like any time when you've got three of something, I can get two of them started, and one of them, one of them tries to fight you. You know, standard stuff. Try to get them all at about the same angle, and it'll be a lot easier to uh, start it. There we go. And then. Right in the corner, you've got a tab. 
And over here you've got a tab. And then that should go right down. And then before you bend or try to put anything back together to finalize it, I would suggest you run it to make sure everything is engaging properly. Arms, legs are still good, guns still good, gears are still turning, and yeah, we're good to go. So let's get that. Now as far as closing tabs on the backs and the sides, you see they put little holes so that you could reach in with a small tool. A very small Allen wrench is always a good choice, or small drill bit. And when you reach in there, then you can bend that metal tab down. Like so. By just fishing it upwards. And that is what's going to hold it together. There we go. And of course the uh, side pieces that I showed you earlier. They're just going to go right back in place. You need a small screwdriver to spread the tabs apart. Like so. So everything's back like normal. I just have to do this side. Everything lined up. Okay. We're now 100% back together on the fighting robot. Let's see if it's still happy. Yes. So, there we are. Same amount of work whether it had needed to have been opened up so I could spin the gear by hand. This was even better. Got in there, lubed the motor, showed you guys what was working, how to get in there, fixed the uh, rubber foot on the ratchet. I think we're good to go.